Hey, 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 hey. Hey, what's up, hey. everyone? Hey. hey, man. What up, man? Welcome to Bagadaga Nights. We are the premier longest running show in Channel 14 history. <laughs> Wait till right. I release the third World Linux episode. <laughs> and then it becomes the second longest running Channel 14 program in history. We're back, we people. We got Joe and Ironic Gamer and I'm Martin. And uh, shout outs to Norm. He can't make us, he can't make it today because uh, there's a house visit tonight. So hope everything's well. So yeah. A house visit like ah, he's, the he's, he's, he's come. going to be like looking at houses. Or like no no uh, like someone's somebody in his house. Okay, right, ah, right, right, right. Like the Inquisition has ha- finally come for him. Yeah, <laughs> like they saw his evening. witch. He they saw his witchcraft it. on sh- on you know on the video. Like, oh yeah, dude, he's a witch. <laughs> How does he become invisible? <laughs> like, it's they saw the video. No. <laughs> now they're knocking on his door. We've seen this paranormal activity in this video from Channel Fourteen. I just I just Lord realized Pan? that Martin. <laughs> I just yes. realized that Martin here uh, also has the same thing going on. Like, True, but at least his tone matches his background yeah. more than Norm. Norm just yes, like, exactly. Doom's decided, no, you. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> for me, he it's really the He has excuse of blending in. <laughs> Norm does not. It's so contrasting. It's literally just his skin. Even his <laughs> hairline, you could see the bits. It just cuts it out perfectly. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I, don't know. I still want to know how. Like that's the, <laughs> that's the ancient awesomeness of Morm, I guess. It's like, look what I can do! Ha ha! Ancient it's like, Chinese secret. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a it's a Zoom thing though, right? Like yeah. I, I, I've honestly never really tried using like backgrounds oh, on yeah. the Zoom. So you know, you guys can be to... talking. I'll try to look for the background. Yeah, I have to assume that because. I mean, if I was trying to fix it up, this will not work. Like, I have so much different tones here because of how the light's hitting yeah. me. It shouldn't chroma remove that. Like, maybe this part's too white here. This oh, part's yeah, here. Fine. But look at Joe. It's like, it knows what to remove. For yeah, Norm, it just goes, mic. skin tone must be deleted. There. Right. Oh, okay. I'll See, just... yours is like working how Norm sh- like should. But Norm yeah. just says, delete the flesh. I, well, I don't know, man. <laughs> well, let's see what happens if I um, let's see what happens if I use my my computer webcam. See if it oh, makes it's it. oh yeah, you. Oh, that's dude, why it sucks. Device. That's why mine sucks because I'm using my laptop. This looks, this looks laptop terrible, stuff. right? Let's let's see what yeah. this looks like, bro. I mean, it's still fine. Wow, it's still better. What, what the hell? Yeah, dude. But again, it's Norm's so a witch. That's why the Inquisition has come for him. <laughs> a house next radio, Norm's. Where is it? Next radio, Norm's gonna be like in like hiding. This radio, Norm. <laughs> the Inquisition has come for me. They saw my terrible powers. Wait, where is my? Where's Joe? Oh. I, I lost. I think the Inquisition has come for him too. There it is. There, there, uh-huh. there we go. There we go. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Okay. Thank heavens, I'm back. So it's episode 101 of Bodega Nights, apparently, or it is yeah, our bro. 101st episode. And, and we back to basics. No we have no Dalmatians. We have no Dalmatians around. <laughs> oh, we went two complete different ways. One guy went Dalma- no, part two with Dalmatians. I went back to basics 101. Yeah. What's well, Bodega 101? Well, I guess well, this is uh, a reminiscing episode. Yeah, yeah. I'm here with Jao and Miko, who were this in the is, first set of episodes of Bodega Nights with This Paolo. is what we were talking about, like, before you showed up, Me, We were talking about, like, how Bodega Nights... We were talking about old Bodega Nights episodes. And oh, those dark days, that. yes. Yeah, the dark <laughs> days. Um, I don't go back there. I experienced it once. I don't need to refresh myself. <laughs> before we, uh, Before we were, you know decent at podcasting right <laughs> like all of that yeah. all of that terrible stuff that that we that we uh said hey I at guess. least you know hey. at one point we should have done like reactions like this watch episode one and watch episode 101 and just see what a hundred episodes does right well, um but they're gonna it's episode zero part one and part two are no, counted as episodes reaction one and two. to a hunt after a hundred episodes uh. how did we start to how we are now Oh, it it started in September of 2013. 
My uh, you guess we're that, talking actually. about Batflex, Segways, and Pizza on the first part, Robocop, Ghost Shark, and Microsoft on the other. Well, that, but that huh. was AG, Box, Sima, Jao, Norm, and John. Yeah, that sounds like your thing because I don't remember talking about any of those things. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. you guys joined episode three when um, it was you, Miko, uh, well, Sue, Jao, and Paolo. It's the Cebu app. Uh, with GTA ah, okay. 5 and the Uncanny Valley and oh yeah, I remember that simulator. one. That, that pretty much what create. That's like the essentially the T the third world gaming pilot episode. Yep, right. it's what, it was. So the pilot. pretty much, Paolo and I considered this right. was that was the unofficial pilot episode. That was uh... so it's fun how Bodega became a pilot run for third world gaming when you think about it. <laughs> It's pretty much Cheers, and everything else is just like an offshoot. So are we Frasier? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yes, so we are. We are. We are Cheers, right? But Dega Knights. Yeah, this is Cheers. cheers. Everything yeah. else, like third world gaming, was you know. Uh, yeah. This is also sort of like the test bed for everything that we do. Um, oh yeah, I know. The, the pilot for Class Record came out on here as well. Yes, of, I remember. Right? Uh, Did the Radio okay. Norm concept come from here as well? Oh yeah, did it? I, I, I remember know. Norm mentioning and playing with the idea, and like I think doing like a really short soliloquy of some sort. And it's like, yeah. hey, that's kind of amusing. That's and then, cool. and then Radio Norm was born. But I, I do know that we played an episode of Radio. Oh Norm my god! On this feed, you did. But the good nights, Norm and Jao set up Radio Norm. Yeah, I mean, like this is this is um, oh pretty much god. where all of our ideas just sort of. This is where ideas come to thrive or die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they, they either thrive or die out there on their own RSS feed. What happens here is we're like, yeah, let's try it out. Yeah, let's try it out. Uh, I, I think for me, I just joined after the running joke stopped because I finally have a mic. Oh, yeah. I remember that. That was, that was hilarious. To, like Martin, then just nothing. Like we'd hear like an <laughs> inhale or something and then be stopped. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was uh, for those for those first couple of years, right? The, the running joke was Martin was the person we'd always talk about but would never show up in, yeah. um, in an episode of in, in, in any of our episodes. And then and then started doing Jobber Talk, which was kind of awesome. <laughs> Like yeah, that was a fun show. Oh my god, that was, that was uh, a fun show. Rest in that peace. was great, dude. <laughs> wrestle like, in peace. Yeah, wrestle in wrestle peace. peace. <laughs> Fre- freaking Jobber Talk reached a hundred episodes faster than Bodega Knights did. <laughs> Apparently, Jobber Talk had a schedule. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, Bodega Nights reached episode 100. I mean, Third World Gaming, it took us, what, August to have episode 69? <laughs> nice. <Yes>. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The most, uh, the most regular show for the longest time was actually Third World Linux. And then AG started flaking out, but then that's neither here nor there. But that was the first one to reach episode 100. And then the next one was supposed to be Bodega Nights, but... Um, well... Real yeah. life took over, man. Yeah, and uh, what was it? Third world and internet. Then, uh, <laughs> yep, it was, it was supposed the, to be. Uh, oh, no, go ahead, me. Yeah, was it? Was it supposed to be like after? Yeah, Bodega Knights, but then became Jobber Talk number two or Jobber Talk number three that hit one hundred. Number two, so Jobber Talk two or three. Second one that came in. Yeah, with that hundred episodes. So we have to say that Jobber Talk came in with the steel chair and just took out you know Bodega Knights. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Wait, hold on. Wait. I have something. Was, oh. You have a steel chair? Oh, no. <laughs> he does. Oh. <laughs> Here it comes over like a knife coming in for the hundred for the second place mission. Oh, what is this coming up in the dark? It's Jobber Talk with a chair. Oh, God. <laughs> that was, I, I don't know, man. I really love that show, though. Jobber Talk. Like, oh, it was a fun show. I love the intro song. Even the wrestlers were singing along to it when I say, hey, nice show. Thanks, Martin. Martin! Jobber talk. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like Martin okay. became... Like, Martin, Martin became kind of a meme in the, that, that PWR no, no. sort of... Um, 
community in, in the PWR community. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Like um, back when you were back when you were in, in in Manila, you were like one of one of the I'm not gonna say pillars, but you were you know one of the people that were yeah one of the semi pillars of the Philippine wrestling scene, at least when it comes to like media, like you and Smart. Henry and all of those, all of those guys. Every time I think Mark Henry, I don't know why I have an image of some. Was that also the name of that uh, old American Wrestler? story about the guy who was able to oh. beat the train? Who the wrestler oh, no, uh, might be based uh, off? I, I, I don't remember, no, 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 but no. I, yeah, it, it um, was like old American. Wait, Zhao mentioned Mark Henry. It, it's ironically a publish, publishing uh, blog that's written by <clears throat> then PWR wrestlers and some columnists. But now the same people have left PWR like July 31st because of a certain issue, which is tied to an issue me and Nico were talking about, which was the cheating and the sexual harassment thing from a certain company that's involved in esports. Are we uh, are we transitioning to the outrage section? Oh, not if yet. If we're not going yet. to that section, <laughs> this, uh, I will have to be legal. very diplomatic. <laughs> yeah, because we have friends in both industries. That's what sucks. Yes. <laughs> Looks like we're not technically in that industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looks we're not like we're not talking in. about it. But yeah, uh, back to Smart <laughs> Henry. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> smart Henry is a play on words. Basically, smart. It's like smart mark or the smart fan, wrestling fan. And then... It rhymes with Mark Henry, who's a former weightlifting Olympian who is now known as Mark Henry, the WWE wrestler, who has that song of somebody's going to get their ass kicked. Somebody's going to... So it's their tribute to the wrestler Mark Henry. Oh, okay. That's a long, convoluted story. Yeah, it's, it's a funny play on words. And yeah, it's a tribute to a wrestler. Who I think is retired now because damn he's old. <laughs> yeah, I don't like thinking about like some of the wrestling I used to watch. And I realized, yeah, those people are not wrestling more anymore. Already yeah. now, like in back yet, like backseat roles and stuff. Like they don't come out anymore. Yeah, I still remember the days of the, you know Hulk Hogan, brother, brother. Hey, brother. <laughs> then, and and like um Whoa. the. <laughs> The wrestlers from like when we were a little bit older are starting to like retire as well. Right? Yeah. Like 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 John Cena is now like transitioning into acting, and so is yes. Batista, right? Like, yep. I do love uh, his Batista's acting where he's retired. so bad it's fun to watch. Wait, which one, Cena or Batista? Cena, but he's pretty chill. Like Cena, yeah, you can but... see he's trying to be a, like a really strict, a <laughs> professional actor. But it just but, does not work. I just see wrestler. I don't see anything else beyond it. <laughs> you can I see him. What he, <laughs> you see John Cena? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God. I All the memes that him. came out from that movie where, like, a sniper was trying to get him. Oh, my God. Hacks. He can find him. <laughs> like, this is the dumbest movie ever. He's, like, fighting no one. <laughs> Nobody. Oh uh, speaking of uh, Cena and Batista, uh, the f- I think what Cena needs to find is the role that Batista found in Drax. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I don't know, he he's needs going- that role. He needs to find that role first before he transitions to movie star. It's like how The Rock, I think, found Hobbs from Fast and Furious, or I, I think another character not the scorpion king i'll be honest uh for me the rock is not hobbs the rock for me is like all his comedy films oh comedy okay at least that's you for me the rock is comedy stuff yeah for me it's hobbs or um the roadblock from gi joe the scorpion it didn't feel like the rock to me it just felt like oh that's dwayne johnson okay dwayne johnson the actor you know I'm, i'm i'm hoping that um what's it john cena uh, finds that role in um, the Suicide Squad. Right? Oh yeah, uh, because he's Peacemaker. playing Peacemaker, right? Yeah, and I think they're gonna make an offshoot. <laughs> I think TV series or movie. Or I don't know Peacemaker as well. Yeah, so, so I hope you think that they ever means... offered him to play Hollow Man two or something. Actually, yeah, <laughs> that would be the best meta. Or, or the, you know, they they missed the boat on casting Cena in the Boys. 
as translucent. Actually, yeah, I would right? actually watch <laughs> like, the action movie. It, it was just there. It was just there, man. Or you know, if he wants to act in like a horror film, The Invisible Man, right? Like that. That was <laughs> that was also a missed opportunity, right there. Yeah, and I would straight up see like a monster film where the guy like just you know pulls wrestling moves on the monster to try to survive. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't know. I, I really do hope. And um, if 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 there's anything, if, if there's anything to it, right? Like it's it's James Gunn that directed uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy film and is also directing the Suicide the, the Suicide Squad film. So like, if he was able to bring the best out of Batista, I'm hoping that Gunn can bring the best out of John Cena as well. Hmm. So I don't know. I'm 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 hopeful. Yeah, I That's mean, right. these guys, they just have to find their spot because there are lots of actors we saw that were kind of awkward. Heck, Keanu Reeves took a while to find his spot as well. Like, well, he had these two periods. He had this period where it was young Keanu when it was Bill and Ted. Then Matrix, like, Neo was kind of like, eh, you're kind of there, but it didn't really stick around until, like, we had, like, more modern, like, old Keanu who's just super weirdly family friendly in a strange way i don't know how to describe it even though his films at all are not family friendly family friendly john wick family friendly no 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 like, <laughs> like his persona that he's just such a nice guy oh even yeah all his characters oh. are so like what the heck is this it's like such a nice juxtaposition of like how he is then how you see him in the films like oh wow okay right, right you appreciate how much he is as an actor like you see ah wow okay well i, I don't know because huh? I've, I've always i've always had this um impression of keanu reeves is just being I, don't know. I always I find him to be the stoner guy as well, especially Speed. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, or like um, what was the name of that? What was the name of that? Like like e- even when he was playing um, the villain in uh, Much Ado About Nothing, when he was playing Don. John oh yeah, and- he was there. I watched that one. That was my character oh. at one point. Right? When he was playing, <laughs> when he was playing Don John in Much Ado About yeah. Nothing, he, he was just I exactly the same. He was like a plank of wood. He's like, oh. Yep, yes. I know. I followed yeah, that uh, acting style for my try. <laughs> right? So, I saw like, that I show as well. And, uh, <laughs> I finally got my glass yeah. in the last show. Never gave me a glass until the very last show. I was so annoyed by that. <laughs> right, I don't I know, nothing like the, to play with. <laughs> the Matrix, the... Well, um, you know, even, even arguably, arguably Bill and Ted, that was... You know, you could you could see like the the Keanu Reeves as like a dos por dos sort of, mm. yeah, man. <laughs> like, you know, so I I don't know, I don't know. Um, he he has a he has one trick, but by God, he does it really well. Mm. Oh yeah, kind of like Arnold. Yeah, yeah, kind of like Arnold. <laughs> right, right. Arnold found the stick. What was it? Just Arnold. Got it. Just don't be anything else. <laughs> We need you to be Arnold in this thing. Kind of like Jim Carrey. For the longest time, Jim Carrey's stick was just being Jim, Jim Carrey. Carrey. Right, right. <laughs> Which I remember was a big complaint about Batman, where it wasn't the Riddler. It was Jim it was Carrey Jim dressed Carrey. as the Riddler. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. The remember, same way... It I, was... Mr. Freeze was just Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. The Freeze. best one-liners <laughs> ever. <laughs> You're not going to put me in the cooler. In the cooler. <laughs> Time to kick some ice. Out. <laughs> he was a I I don't care what people say for me, he was the best Mr. Freeze. I loved him. He was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh man. I don't know. It was um it was the first I, mean, I think his was the first Mr. Freeze after the um after Sinapol Dini um made Mr. Freeze really cool in Batman the Animated Series, pun completely intended. Um, right? Because, like, prior to prior to Batman the Animated Series, Mr. Freeze was just, like, a dude that froze. This had, like, froze people. as a shtick, yeah. It's only yeah. until they brought in his wife and things. Though I heard that they rebooted his origin story again. Yeah, I mean, I've not checked it, but apparently he's been updated once more. But I did like the whole, like, He's doing this because he's trying to save his wife. Gave him a nice, a very interesting side to him. Not just simply, oh, I'm a villain doing this. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, that's, Boomerang. Yeah, I mean, that's that's um, that's how they wrote Batman the animated series. Maybe with the like exception of the Joker, um, but like all oh, yeah, of the Joker. other. There's so many Jokers. Think about it. Yeah, but they were never like. 
what is like what describes a joke? Like what what is a Joker character required here? Because there've been that's the only one that's not consistent. Like there's Jenny, no real origin, no no simultaneous origin story appearance. Mo's are all generally different. The only thing I understand is supposed to be the current opposite of the current Batman. Is yeah. all I understand. Uh, well, what, what's his face? Um, what's his face? Je- Jeff Legend. Johns. Jeff Johns has Jeff like Johns. A, a current ongoing like series about there being like three Jokers or something. But like I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not caught up on it either. But like going back to yeah. Oh, I just want to say that going back to Batman the animated series, the way they would write their villains was really good. Like it was always, um, it was always they had good intentions, but okay. it somehow went wrong in the execution. So, anyway, guys, I uh, gotta saying, go. Being called huh? for work, I'll try to be back. Okay. All right, okay. man. See you. See. You. Well, this is a first. <laughs> So Bodega 101, hey. it was that spell? Two. No, wait, no, that's not binary. Binary is one and zero. <laughs> Man. But yeah, um, what was it? Batman the Animated Series always wrote their villains in that way, which was uh, which was pretty cool. Like, it, it, there was a lot more nuance to the position of the villains, and their being villains had nothing to do with their intention and everything to do with their execution yeah. which which is really deep for like a kids show that was coming off in the back oh well, in of fairness i never cartoons. considered it a kid show as i watched this again but looking back to it as an adult <laughs> it felt like it was really targeting like young adults more than kids i mean yeah. every other show is trying to target like kids but i mean sure they had the toys and things but really let's break down the stories the style everything this is meant for an older audience far older than when we were watching it for sure yeah, probably, probably, but I, I don't know. That that's that was the, that was the thing about it, though. It 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 was it had a lot of like really broad appeal, which you know you can no cookie cutter sort of villains be beyond the henchmen, and even the henchmen at some point started getting their own quote unquote personality. Yeah, yeah, which was like really cool. Yep, like that favorite gif everyone likes posting about that, uh, or that video clip of that uh, henchman going inside the room seeing Batman. Then just like quietly close the door and the turns like anything there? Nope. Yeah. Walks yeah. away. <laughs> it's almost yeah. like, oh, it feel like people. It's not just I'm a bad guy. Oh no, I have to punch you now. Yeah. Which is uh I, I don't know, like I, that that was the first time, at least as a kid, that I could remember um thinking about that sort of thing. You know, like the difference between good guys and bad guys is the decisions that they make. Mm-hmm. Decision right. they make, and well, I guess you no. Know, in fairness, I got that appeal of thing the one time with Superman, just because I I grew up with both Superman and Batman, though I got Batman a lot more. But mm-hmm. Superman, I kind of just always saw him as that guy that like, you know he's going to win. This becomes what does he do to win, and how does he handle it? Which I always found interesting. Hmm. Because uh, like you know he's like his hero that you can't beat me because you can punch me harder or you have a weapon. No, it doesn't really work that way, except for the Kryptonite. But becomes this whole interesting endeavor of if I do it this way, things m- people might get hurt. That's why I even found his like uh, Lex Luthor to be such an interesting character because he's not super powered. Like if Bat, if Superman wants to, he can literally just punch him and he just explodes. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's 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 how you write Superman, right? You that, that's how you make Superman interesting because Superman is not about the power. Superman is about the restraint. Yep. And it's something I don't think people fully get. That's why I've always found it interesting when people try to compare the old, old debate of the Goku versus Superman thing. Right. I mean, because it's completely... A... Oh, no, I, think, I think we're about to say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead, man. <laughs> but, like, completely unhinged. Superman would just, you know, kick Goku's ass in, in a nanosecond. But because of yep. who he is... He just can't. Yep, you know, especially... So. Actually, I'm surprised that the new version of Superman, I feel, might be almost as overpowered as the original the go- one. <laughs> the, the Golden it's Age? It's getting to that point where it's like almost... I mean, Golden Age still destroyed a galaxy by sneezing, which I think was its <laughs> yeah, other point of stupidity. 
But I know in New 52, they're already showing that he has no limit to his ability. So there's technically, they're essentially mm. saying it is like Golden Age. It's just you won't see that. Like they won't do that for a scene, but they want to kind of let you low key know he so could do that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, but by, by the way, just just um, for the people that might be all like, uh, yeah, we, we, we do know that like DC has moved beyond the new 52, right? Yeah. Like they they did rebirth and tried to fuse the continuities and all of that. It's oh, just, God. The first time that I can remember, um, the first time we can remember like the Superman in this current in, in, in his current iteration, starting to become a little bit more powerful incrementally was towards the end of that New 52 run. Um, yeah. So I actually have a few uh, of those things left to read. That, that's, that's the thing about Superman, though. Like, Superman's power is... Like, he, it, a couple of years ago, right? He got that new, that, that, that new like, Super Saiyan power type thing where he just, like, blows up or something. Right. Yeah. Like, right. Um, like he absorbs like most thing he can like explode energy or something. Yeah, so, something like that. And I, I remember uh, I remember people talking about that being all like, "Oh, Superman, new powers." Blah, blah, blah. But then like something that people seem to forget is that Superman. Superman's powers have actually been evolving throughout like time, right? Yeah. Because like in the in the first action comics, Superman didn't fly. Yeah, he did. He jumped. Right? At one he, point, he could leap tall buildings in a single bound. When I was a kid, yep. I used to find that so weird. They're talking about Superman being able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Of course, he can. He can fly, right? <laughs> like <laughs> when I, I, I think when there's I even at... one like cartoon or something that excited. You can fly? No, no, no. I can just jump really well. Yeah, so, sort of like I don't, I don't know if it's Superman or someone else made a joke. There, there was a. That's how they explained like Thor, right? In yeah, the they, he swung his hammer and he holds on to it. Yeah, so technically he's not flying. He's like using kinetic energy. <laughs> I feel like physics needs to talk to him. No, <laughs> that's not how this works. You cannot build up that much energy. It was um, uh, when they were having that debate in like Age of Ultron, right? When you put it in elevator and the elevator goes up, does that make the elevator worthy? Like there was a... Uh, there was. A, I remember that was a big thing, also with like reason why. Uh, what's his name? Vision could lift it up. Is is it his worthiness or him being a machine? Yeah, and it's 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 sort of like um, I remember seeing a, a comic book panel where where Thor hung like Mjolnir on like a coat rack or something. Like, yeah. is, is the coat rack worthy? So like you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I still love those. Like random like scenes in both the cartoons and comics where Thor has held down villains by literally just putting the the I, the hammer on their chest and just kind of like sitting down and talking to them. Yeah, like, you that, can't get up. <laughs> what is that? Physics really does need to have a talk to like yep. <laughs> with that hammer. Like, excuse me, because right. even uh, Captain America has described the hammer as being very balanced and lightweight, so it's not heavy and i think it's been confirmed multiple times it's not a heavy hammer it's just magically bound so if which i don't even know if it's true today if it's still magic or science i'm kind of getting back and forth with them it's kind of weird right so even look back on themselves if you're like a villain on the ground and thor puts like mjolnir on your chest that 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 wouldn't be like a crushing feeling that would just be like you lying down and if you try to stand up, like, you can't? Yeah, I'd like to think so. Like, it's not like there's a heavy weight, but it's like there's something's holding you down. So, like... Like, I mentioned, like, akin to, like, imagine lying behind, like, a rock overhang, something like this. Then you're there, you just... It's not like you're trying to lift the rock up. It's like it's, it's pushing you down. It's just simply holding you down. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. crush you. So, so, so the... So that would mean that Mjolnir is kind of flying, in a way. Yeah, in a weird way. In, in a weird way, it's flying. So, Because Magneto used the hammer by just simply using his magnetic powers in one of the comics, so I remember. Yeah. So he lifted it by, I have magnet. Die. <laughs> the same so, way one of the villains hit Thor with the hammer by picking up Thor and hitting hit, using Thor to hit the hammer. So, like, that's... Yeah. 
audio format, but whatever. So if, if, if this is like your dude, and this is like Mjolnir on the dude, what's to stop the dude from just doing that? <laughs> shimmying off. Yeah, just <laughs> shimmying <laughs> off to the side, like, oh. <laughs> I'm free! <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Man, they should make like Asgardian handcuffs, just make it that way too, just hold them to- Oh, I'm trapped! No! <laughs> Uh huh. Right. Just have like ankle locks. You can't move now. Oh, Actually, this is horrible. That'd be, that'd be really cool though. Like if, if if they had like ankle locks that were um, bound by worthiness, right? They just be like stuck on the ground. Like, dang, can't move. These would be like, you're stealing our lasso of truth stick, eh? Something like that. But now we're gonna make it like a whip or something. It's like, oh, it's like a bolo of worthiness. It just hits you. <laughs> if you're worthy, it won't trip you. <laughs> I could imagine that's like a weapon, like ha ha, the bolo of worthiness. Please don't use this on flying enemies. It it's not great. You see, they're not worthy. It ends up very messy. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> hey, catch! <laughs> <laughs> And the thing is, interesting about the worthiness, I think it's changed so many times. Like, what is the definition of worthiness? Yeah. But I know Captain America, though being able to lift the hammer, was never canon, if I remember right. Or does the MCU make it canon? Because long time, he's done that a few times, but it's never been considered, quote unquote, canon. Basically, it's never been 616. I, a 616? I really don't. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I haven't gone. Because the closer I remember, extensive. like one point, he was able to use it was for, like Odin gave him a temporary pass to hold the hammer at one point. Yeah, I mean it, it isn't um, but the 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 worthiness thing about the hammer isn't anything that's sort of inherent to the hammer, but it was just like Odin, you know, messing with people. Oh, like, I remember you know, that version too. Right, it was just Odin messing with Thor or something. Like it, it was an enchantment of Odin or something that made the that made the hammer unliftable for those that are unworthy. Hmm. So and again, knowing, but that's oh god, I just remember that uh, Odin. The way they portray Odin also changes so much. Yeah. Like there's been versions I've seen Odin where he's like this all powerful evil god, and other times he's just so lazy and dis- detached. And there have been versions where he just literally just watches things and doesn't care. He's also a character that's gone. Like, Thor has had more consistency versus his dad. Same yeah. with Loki. Like, his dad's more of been like an in and out. Hera, I'll be honest, I actually never remembered Hera much from the comics. Yeah. It's only the movie's like, oh, yeah, she was a thing, wasn't she? I completely forgot about you. It's, um, it's, it's like... Well, if, if we're... If, if we look at comic books as sort of... Uh, from that point of view of semiotics as you know images that have meaning or uh, signs and symbols or whatever and we compare it to language when you look at language um, like Spanish right when you when you conjugate your verbs and all of that in Spanish there is like a sort of system to it yeah right but then the first thing you will always learn is you will always have like exceptions to your conjugation rules so, you know, when you say um, estar, it becomes estoy and not estor, right? Because there are exceptions. Um, apparently, the more commonly used something is in a language, the less likely it is to change. And Oh, okay. I, yeah. I guess because of constant use, it just kind of sticks it somewhere. In a weird way. Yeah. Yeah. Like um uh like like our verb for being, when we conjugate it to the first person, um it isn't I be, it becomes I am. It it transforms. Yeah. Right? Whereas every other verb, the infinitive is the same as the first person singular. Yeah. Like, eat becomes I eat, right? But then yep. B isn't I be, it's I am, right? Because it's something that's used so commonly. And it is the very common things that stay the same while the rest of the language changes, right? So um, the change 
in the more common words, the more common sort of conjugations and all of that stuff. Uh, well, the, the more common stuff stays the same while the rest of the language just cobbles along <coughs> in its linguistics through time or language through time changing sort of way and i think it's sort of the same thing with comic book characters like your main characters those mainstays are the ones that retain their personality um, yeah i guess i mean i guess a good example of that one is like guardians of the galaxy to how they are in the movie to how they originally were were very different to how they're portrayed in the film Right, but then like if you look they at could, say, certain aspects, but that's it. Yeah. Whereas if you look at a character like Batman or Superman, um, you know, there is very little change, except maybe like in the eighties, which was when you know. But even then, like there is very little that changes in these main characters because there has to be. Actually, some yeah, sort of even when they turn quote unquote evil, like when they did the injustice thing, they were still very recognizably. Batman and Superman, even though they became the quote unquote evil version. Yeah. Yeah. Have you have you been reading Injustice? Or was it or was it just the game? Uh re- I read part I read half of it, watch the se- watch the movie, and play the game. The the reason why I stopped reading it was mainly because I ran out of material to read it. I, I could not afford to go anywhere. Right. Well, I don't know. It's one of the best it's it's one of the best like stories currently out there in, in, in oh, comics. Yeah. That's why I kind of got referred to it, but then I had a few copies read like, okay, I don't know where to get another copy of this because, well, the comic book stores are kind of hard to go to in the last two years, not right. even know where they are anymore. At some point, I was thinking, should I just go to like order it online? Couldn't figure, oh, wait, there's a movie out, so I'll, I'll watch that one. I guess it's somewhat similar. It felt close, but it felt like it was lacking a lot of things. Yeah, it's probably one of the best stories to come out of comics in the past like decade i will agree because it gave a very interesting aspect to show the amount of restraint and the amount how easy it is for the quote-unquote heroes to read just to go straight up evil yeah it was it was sort of um again going back to batman the animated series and the way they wrote that it's 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 sort of playing around with that same idea that you know the the difference between the hero and the villain isn't the motivation, but how they execute that, which motivates them, you know? Yep. Um, and funnily enough, the Joker kind of had it right that like one bad day can turn somebody, but then where he got, Oh yeah, won. that was the, when in, in injustice is when uh, he killed Lewis Lane or no, no, he didn't kill Lewis Lane. He was able to use the scarecrow serum or something. Yeah. Gas onto the, like, which way? First of all, I kind of got confused. Of how's Superman affect? How soup's affected by gas? Feels like mm-hmm. something he should have like immediately. They're like, no, no, that doesn't work on me. Yeah, well, you know, there right? it's it's that scene. But that scene there where he just like yeah, it's pretty much punches Lewis into powder. Right. So there, uh, that that whole one bad uh, one bad day can um, can make the difference between a hero and a villain. Um, maybe not necessarily as uh not necessarily as fatalistic as that but you, you know the the thing that separates a hero from a villain is how they move forward past that one bad day right like you know if you look at this this why I like batman right classic example of one terrible day that got him to be batman and um it could have just as easily gone in the opposite way if he yeah, was he could have been he could easily become like the brutes to become the kingpin of some sort honestly yeah, with the amount yeah. of like influence he still had he could have gathered right except there's one hero who does go back and forth and that's captain boomerang who i grew like up with him as a villain <laughs> which then he became a hero because i remember he was actually a sidekick for some people and became a side hero but then became a villain again but then became a hero, but then became a villain, then just became like a villain with high moral standards. Yeah, they really like doing that, huh? Like comics really like really like doing that. Like look at all of the X-Men. They've all been like or look at the X-Men Rogues Gallery. They've all been like heroes at some yeah. point. Right? Like um Yeah, yeah. but Boomerang's the only one who goes back and forth. 
I don't know if it's a play on his name. That's why they do that. <laughs> Could be. I don't know, like Suicide Squad. They're all like heroes and villains at some point. Deadpool. Well, Deadpool is complete. No, Deadpool for me is a perpetual sidekick side character who we love but also get annoyed with. Like he's mm. a character that uh, I can't. Uh, I enjoyed the Deadpool films, but the Deadpool film is a film that at best I can watch twice. Like mm. for me, he's a fantastic guy to play off another hero. That's why I love yeah. Deadpool and Cable so much. It was a fantastic yeah. mix. Right, because like Deadpool's like wackiness with Cable's like Cable being the straight man, sort of like mm. no. Yeah, like Cable pushed the story forward, and like Deadpool's like, huh, things are going well. I can fix this. <laughs> Right, so I uh, yeah, I don't know. Because Cable by himself, I'll be honest, was kind of eh, he felt like Punisher, but not. It's like what I saw Cable as. He's like Time yeah. Cop Punisher in my head when I first saw him. Then he's first introduced in X Men. Like eh, you're kind of amusing, but you're not really my thing. But then when the Cable Deadpool series came out, like this is fun. Yeah. I didn't think so. I thought it'd be like a weird like one two shot thing of weird shtick. Like oh, this is actually really good. It it might it, it could have been like. You know, one shot of, you know, but then it just gained traction. And I don't know. To, to me, like, you can't, you can't think about Cable without thinking about Deadpool. Yep. That's why I was so excited when they actually brought them in for the second film. That's when he, so are you saying the third film might be a straight up Cable Deadpool film? I would, I would take that. I don't know how many times it would be rewatchable. <laughs> I bet Martin, at the very minimum, I'm, two. Where is he? Is he? He's joining. Yep. <laughs> he should be here. I don't know. He's like Martin. Um, just a peek behind the curtain for the hundred for the hundred one episode. We record on Zoom now, and Martin is back. Hey, Martin is here. back, like down down there. There's Martin, and that's Miko. I'm on top now. Oh, no. <laughs> Look yeah, at me. I am the top for... of the pyramid now. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, order. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Got called work. Shit went down. Uh, so, I'll just be here a bit briefly. Um, how do I say this? So, what were you guys talking about? Comic books. Oh. You know, very adult things. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> No, the reason comes here is actually yeah, that we're pretty much talking about the superhero villains, the way they are, and what made them who they are. Pretty much like the whole like dynamics of how storytelling has changed and how it's pretty much reflective of stuff, and how Captain Boomerang goes back and forth. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> still one of my favorite side characters. But now that you're back, Martin, let's continue talking mm-hmm. about Bodega Knights through the years. Well. But they started the have, comics as well. <laughs> yeah, it started. It actually, we're did. talking about comics, man. You guys were talking yeah. about the comic books and stuff that time. So, it's oh, I remember nice. there was one great episode, the one and only time that Dave was on Bodega Nights. It was, feel? Yeah, he was really. Was on, oh yeah, yeah. It was oh a two parter. I think it was a two parter. We were at Nico's. We were at Nico's house. Uh huh. Like six hours away from the city, and uh-huh. uh, we oh recorded. yeah, I remember that. That's the time you drove back and forth that long night. Yeah, that was that was for for John. That that was really funny. I was like, all right, yeah, cool, I can do this. Yeah, and your oh. GPS thanked you for creating a road. <laughs> yes, that was so trippy. But um, what was it? I'm a trailblazer. <laughs> yeah, jo- John's flight was like in the evening. So I drove back to the city from uh from Migos like far away but six hour six hours away from the house uh six hours away from the city house. Went back to the city to record an episode of the Sunstar Weekly podcast. Then I remember that show. Yeah, so so um, I went back to the city to record the Sunstar Weekly podcast after dropping off John at the airport. And when we were done recording the episode, I drove all the way back that other, you know, five, six hours. And 
I thought they were asleep already because, like, I was just outside. Like, gate was locked, honking the <laughs> horn, like texting them, calling them, you know. But yeah, there was that. That was the one and only time, two episodes, where Dave Nakpil was on the show, and we were talking about comics and card tricks. I think. Oh yeah, I remember that. Like Dave, oh, yes. TJ, and you, I think we're talking about cards. Was TJ was there, right? Or was he not there? I don't know. Was TJ I have there? to check out that episode. Was TJ ever in an episode? I feel like he might have been at one point. Is TJ going to be the new Martin where for the next hundred episodes <laughs> we're like, TJ. And we say something like really awesome about TJ and he's like the legend of Bodeganites. The legend of TJ. <laughs> That but sounds hey, cool. um, yeah, because we're gonna get Joe <laughs> in a couple joke. of weeks already. <laughs> <what> so, <laughs> yeah, like, man. everyone in the group has has Mike ever been here? Has Mike yeah, ever so. been on Bodega Nights? Huh. I want to believe he did. It I seems like do. Right? And it seems like he'd be the type of person that would be on a, an episode of Bodega Nights. Yeah, at, at least the one. very least one. Yeah, but. Well, it it might have been it might have been after he moved to Switzerland. Yeah, right. Yes, really? So. Okay. How did he not do things? So it's like, y'all, we all used to like hang out so much, like in swanking yeah. all the things. He should have appeared somehow. We started we started Bodega Nights in 2013. When did he move to Switzerland? Much a, like after that, I'm pretty sure. Really? Yeah. Didn't he? Huh. I just remember like some weird ghost episode where Kerfers was there or something. <laughs> yes. I yes. Just, I just remember right. something like something there, but I it's, it's a ghost episode. Like I know somewhere he might have appeared. The same thing like with TJ must have appeared. Because Seema's there, David was there, all the main boys have been there. He must have appeared at some point. Or was it all a dream? Is this a dream? Was a hundred episodes real? It'd be really funny though if we actually checked that we're like we miscounted by ten and we're actually in episode ninety one. <laughs> 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 that would be amazing. I blame it on Spotify if ever, because it counted at one hundred, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at the number of entries on on the list and that was Spotify last week was like ninety nine. All right, cool. Um, All right, hundred episodes. <laughs> you think yeah, they have like uh, weird random things? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, guys. Uh, speaking of that, thank you for everyone who's been listening and who's watching right now for the hundred and first episode of Bodega Nights. It's been a f- awesome first hundred episodes. I hope this starts a good uh, episode series for the next hundred or this may be a episode that can be seen as posts or episodes that have preceded unfortunate events i hope not i really hope not hey 2020 is uh, not done yet <laughs> yeah that's right so there might be freaking gods or, 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 or aliens so i hope that won't happen so here we are hoping that it's not going to happen yeah but I guess I gotta go again. So uh, if ever, on behalf of Miko, Jao, is Martin signing off, guys. Uh, you can catch me, I guess, on another podcast. Here. Wait, wait, wait! It, it makes it sound—it makes it sound like you're like not gonna come back. That's like you're gonna die or something, man. <laughs> or like like no, you're nah. gonna, that you're not you gonna show to up on Bodega Nights anymore, dude. Like. I hope I can next week. I just hope I won't get constant calls again, but it's the nature of the job. Like, Until such time uh, that you have a goat head outside your neighbor's uh, outside your neighbor's door, you're not alone. Oh, no, <laughs> we're going to have a repeat of the first like 50 or so episodes yeah. where Martin's just being talked about and doesn't appear. Oh, hey, no. if that happens, Jobber Talk might come me back. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But first, like Jobber said, goat head. <laughs> <laughs>